What's up, guys? One thing that I think that people are going to look back in history and really take a notice of is how fast AMD is actually gaining market share everywhere right now. I mean, there's only a few markets that AMD is not really giving competition to Intel and to Nvidia right now, which is kind of crazy because like I said before, it's kind of hard to fight a battle when you're fighting on two different fronts. But here's the thing, um, AMD is like kind of chosen a good time to attack. I mean, yeah, that's the way I'm really gonna put it because Intel's roadmap looking at it looks very to me very boring i don't really see anything that's going on so exciting that i'm like wow i can't wait till that new intel chip comes out whereas when the 39x came out me and everybody else on the planet was like holy crap we need to get our hands on the cpu we need it now um i used to feel that way about intel cpus i used to feel that way a lot about them but over the years as things have just kind of been the same the same the same the same the same AMD has been making some changes. Now we all know the bulldozer stuff and that, that was kind of a fiasco, even though they did work for stuff, you know, they were just like eh, CPUs. But now with the Ryzen 2000 and 3000 series of CPUs, we see AMD actually making great strides, putting serious pressure on Intel. Now, even though I haven't even got my dang CPU in here so I can test, I know that the 3900X is going to compete with the i7-9900K, and these CPUs are almost identically priced. Um, one's an eight-core CPU, one's a 12-core CPU, and on the Intel side of things, if I wanted a 12-core CPU, I'm going to be paying $1,099 just to get that CPU. So AMD's CPU solution is half the cost for you know probably similar performance. Now, I don't know if the more expensive Intel CPUs and the high end, their extreme series CPUs are gonna be really that much faster than that CPU. Um, I'd like to know that though, and I think that'd be pretty cool. But right now, AMD really is competing hardcore. I mean, their CPU line looks more exciting and their roadmap just looks way more exciting right now than Intel does. And I mean, that's kind of sad because, you know, Big Blue's been around a long time, you know, Intel inside, you know, we've all kind of been like raised that that's kind of been, you know, kind of in the heart and souls and minds of everybody since, you know, the PC came around, Intel, Intel inside, you know what I mean? But now AMD is starting to win the hearts and the minds. You know, when people like went to war in Vietnam, they said win their hearts and win their minds. And now AMD is starting to win the hearts and the minds of the consumer and gamer market. And as this trend continues, it's just going to be giving AMD more and more market share. Now, you guys know that one of the biggest problems with AMD in the past has been R&D and the funding behind it. Getting that hardcore cash to make AMD competitive. Well, somewhere along the line, AMD is just like, hmm, I guess we're kind of just tired of just barely being there. Why don't we do something really, really different? And for the first time really ever, AMD is coming on really super strong in all ways. Now, the laptop market, that's going to be pretty much still Intel's domination. Their CPUs, their new Y and U CPUs are coming out. The laptop division for them is going to be a kind of a really lock up thing for them. But in other markets, AMD is being very competitive. Epic, Threadripper, Ryzen, all of these names are gaining recognition with people. And as time goes by, the importance of Intel inside is going to become less and less relevant and less and less in the forefront of people's minds. I mean, I've been in the PC industry since its birth and it's kind of embedded in my head. Like I said, I said this like five times in the video, Intel inside, Intel inside, because that's always been the thing that's been there. And as soon as AMD gets to the point where people are no longer really caring about that and that slogan means absolutely jack diddly, that's gonna be the day when Intel's gonna really have to be scared. Right now, I think that if Intel really changed their game, they might have a chance to come back if they change things. But right now, like I said, the roadmap's pretty boring. It's like, yeah, okay. You know, you got the elevator music going on. Why an AMD on the other side is like, yeah, rock and roll, let's go. There's the big difference right now and kind of like even the mindset of what's going on with those things. Now, on the video side of things, AMD 
is really starting to compete because the 5700 XT, especially the Red Devil bad boy that we got from Power Color, it's actually faster than a RTX 27 Super. Yeah, I'm blown away by this as you all. I'll have that video on Monday, by the way, so if you guys you know want to see it on Monday, I'll have that video. I brought the first one where it said basically, you know, it spanks the RTX 2060. Well, guess what? Next week, we'll have one where it's uh, the RTX 2070. Now, if AMD can just come up with a killer video card on the high-end spectrum of things, NVIDIA would be doing good everywhere because this card is priced, like I said, the 3700 XT, it's about $399. You know, they're gonna be between prices of that. You can get um, lesser end models that'll probably be a little bit cheaper if you want to, but these cards are gonna be really competing right now with NVIDIA at that price point. Now, obviously in the lower you know price range thing, um, I don't really think AMD is really doing anything. Maybe they don't even care because they have you know the gaming market with all you know the consoles. They have that market. Um, neither Intel really or at all with Nvidia are touching that market. So that's just another market that AMD you know is crushing in on. So AMD. What you need to do is you need to get us a really super duper fast video card. I don't know what you gotta do, you gotta work with aliens. I don't know if you gotta get a spaceship, go get some crazy alien tech, go to Roswell, do, do some do some robin. But as soon as you guys get a video card that can compete actually with the 2080 at least and do really good against that card, the 2080 Ti, eh, if you don't wanna have a card that's going to be like that, you can probably skip that and let them have their little dominance. But if you just have a card that's really right up there at a great price, you would have almost all the markets at competition. Server market, hmm. Desktop market, workstation market, console market, gaming market. It's a lot of doggone markets. All AMD needs to do right now is make a few changes and AMD will probably be the company that in the next few years will actually take dominance. I'm hoping that some things change and that these other companies, you know, keep being competitive and reinventing themselves. But one thing that we all know happens is that a lot of people, a lot of companies, as they get older and stuff, they kind of rely on the past. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, we'll relax. We've been having this market. We're going to have it forever. And as soon as you actually do that and you're not being super competitive, that's when you're going to lose your edge. And I feel that Intel, in a lot of ways, this way, Francois Pernod, he left there. He was one of the main guys who did their, their engineering and stuff. He's gone. Um, I don't know what's going on there. NVIDIA, I don't really know at all if they're going to be able to totally dominate and, um, uh, excuse me, I don't know if AMD is going to be able to take and dominate NVIDIA. NVIDIA still has a very strong presence, and I'm sure they have other things up their sleeves since they have lots of money and a solid hold on the market. But... AMD could at least be competitive with them. And we all know Intel's gonna have a video card coming out, but who knows where it's going to be in the market, where it's going to sit. So I know you guys have a lot of comments. I think that a lot of people out there, they really want to see AMD start striving and coming up on top. It's a lot of it has to do with, like I said, the mind and winning your minds and hearts because people have a lot of anger towards Intel in a lot of ways. They have a lot of anger towards Nvidia and they use those anger things as a generator to pretty much say, hey, I don't like these companies. I want to embrace another company and AMD is that company. I'm Elric. Thanks for watching Tech of Tomorrow. We'll see you guys back here on Monday where we've got something really cool coming up. You'll see the RTX 2070. Woo, my power color. Oh!